honor and respects. This is San Cis de Brujo Luis. And I'm doing a second video on the gypsy spirit. Uh, around two years ago, uh, around February of 2015, and I'll leave a link down below of that video, I did a little music video on the gypsy spirits. It was pretty much uh, just the gypsy, just, you know, me recording an altar that I had dedicated for the gypsy spirits with uh, music in the background. And I noticed that I never really took the time to speak about this well-respected, well-loved uh, group of spirits that are well-loved not only in Puerto Rican and Cuban Espiritismo, but also well-respected in the Maria Leonza uh, Espiritismo tradition of Venezuela, as well as a, the Brazilian Umbanda tradition, where in Spanish we call this Comisión or this Corte, uh, this group of entities, we call them Los Gitanos, y las gitanas. In Brazilian Umbanda, they are known as los ciganos y las ciganas. And they are not to be confused, which they are often confused with uh, the Pumbashiras. That is a totally different group of spirits. Now, around two years ago, and like I said, I'll leave a link down below, I did record a video on a on the gypsies and there was a reason why I recorded it in February because February uh, February 13th is the the feast day of the patron saint of psychic diviners and fortune tellers and his name is uh, San Agubus San Agubus which is or Agabus which is the patron saint of uh, fortune tellers diviners and psychics now, before I speak about the gypsies, I would like to dedicate a prayer uh, to the queen of the gypsies. The queen of the gypsies, or the patron saint of the gypsies, is known as Santa Sara La Cali. And this is a statue of hers. I'm going to show you it. I'm not going to go too deep into Santa Sara La Cali, but I would like to offer a prayer before I do the video on uh, what we call La Comisión or La Corte de los Gitanos, the, the entities or the group of spirits that we know as the gypsies. And I would like to dedicate a prayer to Santa Sara La Cali. Santa Sara, Santa Sara La Cali is also known as Santa Sara La Negra, or a St. Sarah the Black, and her feast day is May 24th. Uh, many times, well, every year uh, in the southern port of France, a uh, southern seaport, it's known as uh, St. Uh, Santes Maris de la Mer. All the gypsies, uh, many gypsy caravans from Spain and France, they migrate to honor uh, this Santa or this saint uh, in the ocean where they, you know, all the caravans go and they bring out the, the virgin and, and they bring her into the ocean. So I would like to uh, dedicate a prayer to her. And her feast day, of course, is uh, May 24th. But I would like to start this video with a prayer just for her. And it is uh, my sacred lady, Santa Sara La Cali, mother and queen of all the gypsy tribes of this earth, you who protect the caravans of your people, I invoke your sublime powers, Santa Sara La Cali, to soften my heart and remove the anguish at my feet. Help me open the roads and clear my path. Conquer all evil and storms in my life. Gypsy mother of the mysteries that were bestowed to the people, giver of music and dance, you that aid in the sight and the gift of the mysteries of magic bestow upon me strength to conquer the roaring lion that wishes to devour me. Holy Saint Sara La Cali, dispel the evil spirit soul, the evil spirits and the evil souls that may surround me. 
Holy Queen, may the waters of the rivers and the seas not drown me. I humbly invoke your powers. May I not sink into the depths of the sea. Bring before me courage and strength, such as that of your people, the Roma. Perfume my life with the rose oils and give to me love and joy of dance and music. May the Roma gypsy spirits bless me with wealth, peace, love, and victory. Now and forever, I will praise your name. Hail Santa Sara, La Cali, and all the people of your nation. Opocha, opocha, ole. Hail, blessed Santa Sara, La Cali, you who are the patron saint of travelers and gypsies the world over. You who live in the region of Santes Maris de Lemer. You who came from a distant land far beyond the seas. I go to the ocean to find you there to tell you all I have in my heart. I confide in you and tell you all of my sorrows and my joys. I pray for all the members of this house, for all my family and all my friends. Sara, watch over me. Santa Sara La Cali, come to me. Remember that Santa Sara La Cali's feast day is May 24th. This is the day when gypsies in Europe uh, make the pilgrimage uh, from Spain and France and other parts of Europe. They make the pilgrimage uh, to a southern seaport in uh, France, and it's known as uh, Santes Maris de la Mer. They make the pilgrimage to the seaport uh, where they bring out the saint and they bring her into the ocean and, and they cleanse and they, and they bathe and they wash and, and they just feast and, and, and have, you know, and be merry and just have a joyful time honoring their patron saint, uh, Santa Sara La Cali. The reason I'm doing this video for a uh, February, as I did with my first video, is because it is the month of the patron saint of psychics, diviners, and fortune tellers, and his name is uh, Saint Agabus, uh, which is uh, his feast day is uh, February 13th, and I'll try to get a picture uh, for the video. The International uh, Feast Day, or Dia del Pueblo Gitano, in Europe and, our, and, and all over the world is April 8th. In Spain, in Andalusia, uh, the gypsies, or the gitanos, they celebrate the day of their pride, of their pueblo, the Pueblo Gitano, uh, April 8th, but also on November 22nd. El Día del Pueblo de los Gitanos, the day of the gypsy people. Now here's a, a gitana, a gypsy spirit, una muñequita, a gypsy spirit doll. And often, if you go to a lot of Puerto Rican people's houses or Cubans, you will see these muñecas, these uh, spirit doll entities. Uh, this one, of course, is for a gitana in this individual or this person's cuadro espiritual. And uh, getting to know the spirits that are of your cuadro espiritual, you begin to learn their likes and their dislikes. And you will begin to learn uh, their personality traits. A well-developed espiritista or an espiritista desarrollado, uh, we have a strong relationship with our spirits. Uh, we know and recognize our healing guide, our protective guide, uh, which guide is a, our teacher, which guide is uh, our gatekeeper. So uh, we heal often with a curandero guide. Uh, we might uh, 
perform some magic with a brujo or bruja guy. Bruja. As people say bruja, it's brujo or bruja. So uh, many times an espiritista, if they perform magic, they will do it so with a brujo guide. Uh, we might bless or sanctify with either a nun or a monk, a monk guide. Uh, we cleanse and fight spiritual warfare with an African Congo or Madama guide. Uh, we might uh, track or find things with an Indio guide. And one of the guides or one of the espíritus of our cuadro espiritual as well for fortune telling and divination is a uh, gitano, a gypsy. So right here you see that this guide, this muñequita, she's preparada. Okay, you can see right here, this is her empaque that espiritistas prepare for the gypsies. Uh, you see her trades, her tools of the trade. There's a, a little crystal ball and a deck of fortune telling cards and other things that the espiritista uh, gave to La Muñequita that represents that guide uh, within their cuadro espiritual. These uh, empaques are always prepared by an espiritista, okay? It gives the, the Muñequita, the doll, the ache, the energy of the espiritu, okay? <laughs> Sorry about my dog. Now here you can see La Gitana. Often we put Los Muertos or Los Seres or Los Muñequitas, we sit them in a wooden chair. This one is pretty much covered up. Uh, often you will hear espiritistas talk about having uh, corrientes encima. Corriente encima is having uh, currents of bad feelings uh, that can be caused by a causa spirit, una causa is what we call it. A causa is an unknown, obscure uh, spirit. These causas or uh, obscure, unclean spirits can be caused by entities sent to harm us by what we know as uh, muerteros or necromanceros, necromancers. Uh, these causas can be as much uh, foreign as it can be an uneducated entity within your cuadro espiritual uh, that wishes to desarrollar, it wishes to develop uh, and materialize within your life. Now, our spirits influence us in our lives daily, but there's a big difference between influence and completely materializing our spirits to the point that they are grounded enough to see the material life through our very own eyes. Uh, we have to be very careful in giving the spirits in our cuadro espiritual too many earthly uh, material offerings and gifts. Uh, an uneducated and un underdeveloped espiritista, you'll often notice that they, they, you know, it's okay to give your, your, your espiritus dolls and jewelries and coins and trinkets, as you will often see many a... Uh, Espiritistas do. This is okay, but to a certain degree. And with caution, the more material offerings you give your spirits, the more they want to materialize themselves within you to the point where you are no longer there. But it's like, walking, it's like a walking zombie. You become a zombie, and the spirit materializes itself so much in your life that they uh, live life through you. Now, in all my years of uh, practicing espiritismo, I have seen uh, people who have spirits within their cuadro espiritual who are underdeveloped uh, to the point uh, where their spirit takes on, uh, the person, the individual who's alive, takes on more the characteristics of the spirit and loses uh, him or herself more and more every day. This happens when a spirit is over-materialized. I knew of a client once, a female impersonator, uh, a drag queen. This, this gentleman was a drag queen. Uh, he would spend hours and hours uh, 
changing his makeup. He was never happy with his appearance. Uh, and you would, I mean, literally, you would see him change his lipstick and rub it off and, and, and put on different coats of lipsticks, change wigs. He was just never happy with his appearance. Uh, so I had gone to this client's house and I re and you know to investigate his his cuadro espiritual, his altars, and I came upon his gitana. He had a gitana spirit, and this gitana had a shrine. I mean, this spirit. It was a doll similar to this, but there was a shrine to the spirit that would make any deity jealous. Uh, the shrine had. The muñequita, it had the doll, it had perfumes, it had fans, it had tarot cards, it had crystal balls, it had flowers, it had many candles, food offerings. This is okay once a year, and we try to give our spirits candles and water. You should always give your spirits water and candles, but giving them too many offerings on a daily, you tend to lose yourself little by little to the point where the spirit in your cuadro espiritual eh, over materializes itself within you. Okay? And so this was a problem with this person that we had to correct. We had to show this person that, you know, it's okay to have these spirits in your cuadro espiritual. They're there for a reason. Okay? They are there for a reason. But we as espiritistas, we must... Eh, develop our spirits. We must elevar, elevate our spirits. We don't want to keep our spirits too grounded. Uh, in not elevating our spirits, we ourselves do not elevate. No desarrollamos, no elevamos. Uh, as our spirits are grounded, we become uh, as grounded as our very own spirits. So this was a problem with this person is that he had too many uh, offerings. The altar was like a shrine to a god. It is okay to give your spirit uh, things that they like. You know, this one has a crystal ball. This one has uh, tarot cards. And, it, you know, once a year, on the day of, the, of, that, of that muerto, of that ser, of that spirit, but this should be only done once a year. A lot of people choose to give to their muertos on el Dia de los Muertos or on a feast day of a muerto, uh, but not too many offerings too much because then you're overgrounding them. You're, you're, you're allowing your spirits to become stuck, okay? And then they become a... They, become, they begin to materialize themselves within you. Now, many people who are not uh, developed or desarrollado espiritualmente, uh, they can often become prisoners to a causa or an uneducated spirit within the cuadro espiritual or a causa that was sent uh, by someone who practices uh, dark forms of magic or witchcraft. I remember a well-known uh, YouTube witch uh, who no longer has her channel here on YouTube uh, she had a, right here, she had a Madama spirit. This is that, and I'll probably talk about more about Madama spirits in a future video. This one's preparada. You can see. She had her Madama spirit within a pot. Uh, I think it was like a, a tin pot, and it had chains and all this other uh, paraphernalia. And I asked her, why do you have your Madama within that pot and she had said that a, a hoodoo practitioner and i'm not disrespecting anyone who practices hoodoo but a hoodoo practitioner had told her that her madama spirit uh, needed a pot okay this doesn't exist in espiritismo okay this is not a part of espiritismo whatsoever Putting your spirits in pots is like enslaving the spirit and not allowing your spirit to elevate. And in putting them in pots, in calderos, uh, there's a term that we say, se te puede bortear, o se te va bortear. And that's what I told you. I said, that, that, esa negrita, esa madama se te va bortear. It's going to flip against, uh, against you. Uh, no spirit uh, wishes to... No spirit that wishes to elevate wants to be enslaved within a pot. They don't, if they were slaves in life, why would they want to be a slave 
in spirit. And that's one mistake that a lot of people uh, do is placing spirits in pots, okay? And this is not a practice within Espiritismo. Well, generally, it's not a practice in Espiritismo. Sadly to say, people uh, who do not develop with their spirits uh, can either go crazy, one, can go crazy, or two, they can become, uh, they can convert into Christianity, uh, and then they start calling their spirits demonios, or, de you know, demonic, demonic entities, because their spirits uh, never were allowed to uh, desarrollar, to elevar, to elevate. I have known cases when women have gotten possessed by spirits uh, that materialize themselves when uh, the woman is making love, uh, and then they are not, you know, they're never sexually pleased or sexually, you know, they're sexually frustrated because the spirit uh, materializes itself when lovemaking. Uh, and this could be very dangerous uh, because, the, of course, the person never feels sexually pleased. Uh, and this could cause uh, separation, divorce, breakup. Uh, these spirits can become like a succubus or an incubus, uh, not just for females. I've seen male individuals who have spirits that are uneducated or unelevated that take away their sexual vigor, their sexual energy, uh, and they become a vampiric in a sense that they do become like succubus or incubus. Entities and spirits uh, within your cuadro espiritual that are not properly elevado or elevated uh, can become like an uneducated child, okay? Uh, we've all raised children. Well, I'm, I'm assuming we've all raised children. And so they can become like an uneducated child where they become, a, as we say in Spanish, un salvaje, a savage. So just like we have to educate our children, uh, we have to educate and help elevate our spirits within our cuadro espiritual. By elevating and educating our spirits, we, they in turn help us, educate us, one, help us develop spiritually, and help us, help our, uh, help us also develop, also grow, also learn. Remember, it's just like I said, uh, spirits are just like little children. You know, you don't, you don't educate them, uh, they will become un salvaje. They, they can become a savage. And they will take on uh, earth-bound uh, energies that are not very pleasing for the uneducated espiritista. Now, certain spirits do use a caldero or a cazuela espiritual, and you will see calderos and cazuelas espirituales within espiritismo. But in espiritismo, they, uh, the spirit does not generally live in the cazuela or caldero or the statue or the muñeca. Uh, the caldero, the, cal, uh, the cazuela, the statue, the muñeca, it becomes a portal where the energies of that spirit manifest. In espiritismo, we never chain a spirit down as it will voltear, it will flip uh, against uh, the person. Calderos, uh, these practices should be left to an educated, an educated practitioner of one of the branches of Palo, such as Palo Mayombe or Palo Monte, and under the supervision of a tata in those uh, traditions and in those practices. But you will see calderos espirituales and cazuelas espirituales a, to an Indio or to a Congo spirit, but again, those spirits are, it's not like in Palo Mayombe, those spirits do not live there, it becomes a portal where that spirit's energy manifests, a, but the spirits do not live there, you know, this is not part of the practice of Espiritismo. Now here, you're going to see another Gitana Okay, and you see that she has her Spanish fan, uh, her tambourine. I did a video on this as well. Uh, I prepared her. She was originally an Española. Many people confuse Españolas with Gitanas. They are two different uh, groups of entities. They're two different, uh, different cultures, gypsies and, and Spaniards. Uh, you will see that she has her what she likes. Uh, my gitana right here, this is uh, 
Si maha, moho, maha. Maha cologne, maha perfume. It's a perfume. If you're Puerto Rican, you will know uh, what it is. Comes in a box like this. Maha. And here's her powder. She enjoys her her polvo. If you're Puerto Rican, uh, you will remember our grandmothers always had the maha. So this is a, another a altar. Well, not an altar because we don't keep our gitanos in altars or our muertos in altars. Uh, we have a, a boveda espiritual, but we keep our spirits usually in a chair or seated, which goes into another thing that I would like to talk about. Uh, I have seen duende spirits or altars for duende spirits uh, within people's homes. Duendes work well with gitanas and gitanos, and gitanos and gitanas work under the guidance of a santo or a guardian angel, but duendes, or duendes are known in English as elves or goblin spirits, are nature spirits, uh, that don't often trust humans, and duendes are not to be kept within the home, but outside by a doorway, or in a garden, or in nature by a tree near the home. Bringing a duende inside a house, or creating an altar for a duende uh, within the home can be very dangerous, as they can reap they can reap havoc uh, within the person's house and become gluttonous and bring displeasure. Displeasure. Uh, they can become lazy and often make you uh, start losing jewelry and keys. And that's just the beginning. Uh, it can get. It can get and often does get worse from there. Now, causa spirits or uneducated spirits that are not allowed to elevate. Are, are not always spirits of one's cuadro espiritual, but it can be a foreign spirit, as I've said earlier, uh, sent by uh, someone who works necromancy, a muertero or a negromancero. So like our santos, we can give um, our spirits lights like a candle. Uh, we can give them a glass of water. And on their special days, maybe once a year, such as El Dia de los Muertos, we give them a feast, maybe uh, a gift, uh, such as a cologne, uh, something that they enjoyed. That's why you see that I have uh, this perfume here as a gift to La Gitana. So you can give this to them once a year and things that they enjoyed in their lives. Uh, but doing so regularly can be dangerous uh, to the individual who's not developed uh, because what you're doing, again, is you're creating an earthbound spirit. Uh, female gypsy entities can aid us in fortune-telling, uh, in divination, in oracles, while male uh, gypsies can help us find work, okay? Um, but over-materializing spirits can be, like I said, uh, very dangerous, especially with gypsies. Uh, gypsies, uh, over-materializing gypsies or giving them too much will make a, a person feel uh, nomadic, uh, make us move a lot, you know. You, you just don't find happiness in one home. You're always going from one home to the next. Uh, you never feel happy in a certain place or in a relationship. Uh, you jump around in relationships. And this happens when you over uh, materialize over you you don't let your spirit elevate you don't let your spirit uh, elevarse the spirits are there for a reason they're there to teach us they're there to guide us they're there to watch over us but Many of them can be very tricky, and this is why you must, or people who practice or work with spirits, they must know their spirits, their likes and dislikes, and try their best not to keep them uh, too over-materialized or too grounded, as this could be very detrimental and dangerous uh, to the person. There's a Spanish saying, no todo que brilla is oro. Not everything that shines is gold. And this is also true with the spirits de tu cuadro espiritual. The cuadro espiritual is there to help you elevate, to help you grow, to help you be stronger. Uh, they are not here to give you material pleasures, material gains. Most of the spirits that give you uh, material pleasures and gains 
are earthbound spirits and often they come back uh, searching or looking for a price. We often give our spirits on a daily basis uh, two things, light, uh, the light of a candle, okay, to give them luz, and water to give them claridad, clarity, okay, to help them elevate. Many times you will see, this right here is an Española. And not everything that has a turban on their head and is African is a madama. There are many different forms of spirits. There's, there's esclavas, there's negritas, there's congas, there's madamas. And the similar thing with this right here, this is an española. A lot of people confuse las españolas with a gitana or a pumbashira, which are, again, three different groups of entities. It is the job of an espiritista, a well-developed espiritista, that when we're sacándote el cuadro o registrándote, registering your cuadro espiritual, that we come up with names and histories of who these spirits are. We become, in a sense, like a doctor helping a woman give birth. And then sometimes, you know, a doctor might or a nurse might suggest a name uh, and a person can keep it. That's where we, you know, that's our job. We open the doorways for you to give birth to the spirits that have always been with you, have always walked with you. Uh, but it is your, uh, just like a child, like a newborn child, it is a lifetime of learning who your spirits are. And just like a child, you don't want to spoil uh, your child. Do you see what I'm saying? You don't want to spoil your, your spirit. Uh, you don't want to give your, sp your, your children everything freely uh, because then they think everything is owned to them. And th the same concept with the spirits in your cuadro espiritual. So I always suggest to people, give them uh, the simplest offerings of candle, if you want every day, this is fine. A candle to give them light and water to give them claridad, clarity. And once a year, Dia de los Muertos, give them all their offerings that they enjoy. Espiritistas, this is why we have uh, sesiones and misas espirituales uh, so that the spirits can come down and communicate with us. And then there they enjoy their, their coffee and their tobacco and all that. Uh, but... Again, on a daily basis, you should just only be giving your spirits water and candles, especially the spirits of your cuadro espiritual. And then, you know, you can give them gifts if you, if you choose to uh, every so often. Okay, so I'm going to close this video because I'm sure it's getting very long. And as you can see, uh, the topic on spirits can be very extensive and very long and very, it's just very long. Many people go to espiritistas, espiritistas that are well developed to understand their spirits, uh, to understand who their spirits were. But not all people need to go to espiritistas. There are some people who are born with the sight uh, to understand uh, their spirits. And they call these spirits either a guardian, a angel, a protective guide. Uh, doesn't matter if you have a name or not. I know many witches who have never gone to an espiritista and they know their guides. They call them familiar spirits. Uh, the word familiar uh, comes from the Latin word familiar, something that's familiar to you. So many uh, witches know uh, their spirits. They never have to go to an espiritista and they spend their whole lives uh, developing the relationship with uh, that spirit, that familiar spirit. So, yes, uh, if you've seen the movie, The Psyche, uh, what was it called? The Sixth Sense, that little boy that saw the dead people, he was in development. He was desarrollando. And he didn't know, uh, if I don't remember the movie very well, but he didn't know that the doctor was uh, a spirit of his cuadro espiritual that one needed his help to complete a mission. And once, uh, if you saw the movie, he was uh, scared of the spirits in the beginning, but once he started to develop uh, his his dones, his gifts, his facultades, he lost fear in the spirits. Uh, so remember, it is our job uh, to help our spirits elevate, to help them grow, and and 
as they grow, we grow, okay? And we try not to keep our spirits a earth, a, you know, materialized with too many material pleasures. So this is an extensive video. I hope uh, you liked it. And I'm going to cut it short because it's gotten uh, a little too long. In closing this video, I just want to talk to you about, a, or, or in the video, about if you find out uh, or, you know, well, traditionally, when people have a spirit in a cuadro, uh, they love to immerse themselves in the culture or the traditions of these spirits. Uh, so, for example, I know a lot of people who have a cuadro, and they're not from India, but who have a lot of spirits that are, who has a lot of spirits that are, their cuadro is very Indian, very Hindu, and uh, so then, you know, people like that would go to India. They would immerse themselves in the Hindu religion and would learn about the Hindu, the Hindu deities. Uh, I know, of course, I know a lot of people, whether they know it or not, uh, Americans, Caucasians, who have a, a very strong a Haitian cuadro. Un cuadro haitiano is how we say it in Spanish. Un cuadro haitiano. And then what happens is they, they, they get this strong desire to become initiated into voodoo or whatever. You know, and this, is, this goes with a lot of your spirits. When you have a certain spirits in your cuadro or you have a, an attachment to a spirit, it is very important to learn something about each and every one of your spirits in your cuadro espiritual. So if you have a cuadro eh, espiritual or a cuadro gitano, uh, a gypsy frame, you know, you will start off by picking up books about their culture, about the people. Uh, everyone who has a cuadro indio, uh, Native American cuadro, we want to learn about our Native American spirits. And so we pick up on books on their history, their culture, their people. So for those who have a, a spirit, that un, un espíritu that is gypsy, of course you're going to pick up on a, books uh, about uh, los gitanos, and then sooner or later you will travel to I don't know Andalusia, Spain, uh, to be around the gitanos to see how they live in in the in the caves of Granada. Do you see what I'm saying? So, but I'm going to talk to you about a uh, couple of books that I recommend. This one is Ray Buckland's Secret of Gypsy Fortune Telling. The three books that I'm going to talk about is not so much about the culture but more so about witchy, uh, gypsy uh, fortune-telling and witchcraft. The, two that I've, the first two that I'm going to mention right here is Secrets of Gypsy Fortune-telling. And you can see, just real quick, it's, this is an old book, and it's just roughly about the gypsy culture and how, not so much a history, but what methods that they used... Uh, for divination and fortune telling. I don't know when this book came out, but it's by Ray Ray Buckland. It's uh, publishing published by Lou Elian. I think this came out in the eighties or early nineties. Another book that I recommend by Ray Raymond Buckland. Yeah, Raymond Buckland is a uh, Gypsy Witchcraft and Magic. Again by Raymond Buckland. I don't know. Let's see who published this. Llewellyn also published this. I'm not a Llewellyn fan, but, you know, sometimes they... And it has, you know, pictures on... Really beautiful pictures. I think Raymond Buckland did a tarot on the gypsies. Actually, there is a tarot on the gypsies. I think it's upstairs. Let's see, it has beautiful pictures throughout the book on gypsy caravans and gypsy camps and remember that a lot of a lot of books when we read about a, a spirit in our cuadro many times books romanticize the lives of the spirit and it's nothing of what it really is okay so I definitely recommend gypsy witchcraft and magic by Raymond Buckland but one of the great works that I recommend 
is Gypsy Sorcery and Fortune Telling by Charles Goofrey Leland. This book was first uh, published, I think, in 1891. And inside the book is very beautiful. The illustrations is very beautiful. It's from the 1800s, it's a classic. I'm trying to look for, I personally am trying to look for this in a hardcover. But I just wanted to close the uh, video on showing books that when, when you have a certain spirit in your cuadro espiritual, if you have a cuadro espiritual that's very African, then you want to learn about African history. You want to immerse yourself in that, in that lifestyle. Uh, like I said, Hindu. If you have a cuadro indio, Hindu, you want to learn about the Hindu religion, the Indian people. You want to immerse yourself in their culture, their food. And the same thing with a gypsy. If you have a, a Gitano spirit, then you, or a cuadro, let's say, Japones, Oriental, Chino, you want to immerse yourself in their culture, in their traditions, in their ancient religions, in their ancient beliefs. Uh, know as much about that spirit. It, it creates a stronger bond with you and that spirit. So I just wanted to close uh, the video with just, uh, these are not so much more on the history of the gypsy people as it is more on their sorcery and more magic and fortune telling. Anyways, I'm going to close the video with this and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, please subscribe and please uh, hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Lo que mis ojos no ven, los muertos me lo dicen. Y con los muertos no se juega, y si se juega, ten cuidado. While my eyes do not see, my spirit will see. And never play games or toil lightly with your spirits. Have respect.